Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to show you all how to factor polynomial expressions using a variety of methods. So we're going to do three examples here and for the first one we've got 12c squared minus 3 and we want to factor this completely. Now the main method we're going to be using here is difference of two squares. So anytime we have a difference of a squared minus b squared we could factor this to a plus b times a minus b. But in this situation here, since we're factoring completely, it's a good idea to factor out the greatest common factor first. Now for the first example, I'll show more of the steps, and then as they get more complicated, I'll kind of skip over them. So this one here, if I show all the steps, this could factor as three times four c squared minus three times one. Now I'm writing the times one there so that uh, you don't forget to write the one as a placeholder at the end. But if we write this first term as 3 times 4c squared, it shows us that the greatest common factor between these two is 3. So what we do is we write the greatest common factor outside of parentheses, and then we write the leftovers. For the first term, we have 4c squared left, and for the second term, we have minus 1 left. Now, if we wanted to check that this is still equal, we could distribute, but this is the factored form of the original expression. But to factor it completely, we're going to have to use this difference of two squares idea. So in this case here, we have to be able to recognize what's the first square and the second square. Well, in this case, if we use this formula, the square root of 4c squared is going to be 2c, and the square root of 1 is going to be 1. So that allows us to factor this last part here. We have 3 times, and we're going to break down 4c squared minus 1 into two factors. So using a difference of two squares, we have plus or minus, and the square root of 4c squared is 2c, and we write it once again as the leading term here, and then the square root of 1 we write here. Now to check your answer to these kind of questions, you could just multiply everything back out but the solution to the first one is going to be 3 times 2c plus 1, 2c minus 1. Now for question 2, this one has a little bit more involved, but it's going to start off the same way. We're going to want to factor out a greatest common factor here of x. Now since 2 and 13 are prime, we know there's going to be no numerical component to the greatest common factor. So for now, we're just going to write x times and that's going to reduce all the x's by a power of 1. So we have 2x to the second plus 13x, and then we've got plus 15 at the end here. Now, at this stage, I'll kind of take you through the thought process. So when I'm thinking about these kind of questions, I notice that it's a quadratic expression with the leading term other than 1. So I use what's called the AC method. So the a term is the first coefficient, which is 2. c is the last term, which is 15. And 2 times 15 is 30. And the b term, or the middle term, the coefficient of x, in this case is 13. So I'm looking for two numbers that have a product of 30 and a sum of 13. And those two numbers are going to be 10 and 3. Now what I do with these two numbers is it tells me how to break down the middle term here. So I'm going to write the x as I normally would, but now I'm going to rewrite the inside as 2x squared plus 10x plus 3x and then plus 15. And we're going to use a method called factoring by grouping here. So we're going to factor the first two terms. So we'll write this down. We're factoring out 2x and we're left with x plus 5. And then for the next two terms, we'll do this in a different color the greatest common factor is 3 between 3x and 15, and we're left with x plus 5. Now, the fact that we're left with matching factors is a good sign. That means we did this correctly, and that's going to allow us to close out the last part. And then this x just tags along. And one other note here, I wrote 10x plus 3x. This will give us the same answer if we were to write it backwards and say 3x plus 10x. You'll get the same thing. So then for this, we have x times, and then if we look inside the brackets here, the matching factors that we're going to take out are x plus 5. 
So we take out the x plus 5. And what we're left with, we have 2x on the first term and positive 3 on the second term. So we'll just write this a little bit neater. We'll write it in without the brackets. Now they're not necessary. So we have x times x plus 5 times 2x plus 3. So this is our, sele uh, this is our solution to the second question. Now for the last question here, uh, this one's a little bit annoying to look at. You could multiply this out and then distribute the negative 9 and then rearrange and then factor all over again, but there's a nicer way to do this. Uh, this is another situation here where we could use a difference of two squares. So we're going to use this concept once again for this last question here. But in this case, it's not as easy to see it. Um, we'll start off by factoring out a greatest common factor. So we have 9 times 1 minus y plus 2 squared. But if we write it this way, it's, it's very subtle. But in this case, if we use the difference of two squares formula, you could think of this as just 1 squared. a is going to be equal to 1. And in this case, b is going to be equal to y plus 2. So in this case, if you see if we were to plug in, I have 1 squared minus parentheses y plus 2 squared. It matches what we have on the inside. So for the next line, we'll write 9. And I'll use a bracket for this. We have 9 times. And then when we factor using a difference of two squares, we have a plus b. So we're going to have 1 plus y plus 2 times. And then for the next part, we have a minus b. So we're going to have 1 minus y plus 2. Okay, so all we did here was use difference of two squares. But in this case, we have a equals 1 and b equals y plus 2. So we're doing 1 plus y plus 2 times 1 minus y plus 2. But a sneaky step here to look out for is that you have to distribute this negative. Or you could have seen it here that minus b, I could have just taken this and multiplied both sides by negative 1, and I would have negative b equals negative y minus 2. But this will give us the same result doing it this way. So for the next line, we're going to have 9 times. And then in the first parenthesis, we could simplify. 1 plus y plus 2 is y plus 3. And then in the second parenthesis, we're going to have 1 minus y minus 2. And then we'll close this bracket. So then this is going to simplify more. We have 9 parentheses y plus 3. And then in the second parenthesis here, we have uh, 1 minus y minus 2. Well, when we combine 1 minus 2, we're going to get negative 1. So we have negative 1 and a negative y here like this. So we could stop here, but it looks a little bit nicer if we take a negative out of this. So we'll have 9 times y plus 3 times negative 1 times, and that's going to change the sign of everything on the inside. So then we could combine negative 1 times 9, and we'll have negative 9 times y plus 3 times y plus 1. So this would be our final result to the next question here. But an alternate solution we could have used would have been to multiply this out, distribute the negative 9, add the 9, and then factor, and you should get the same thing here. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on factoring polynomials completely. If you found it helpful, please click the like and subscribe button below. And if you have any requests, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you all for watching.